Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to make a version of Mexican fresh chorizo. Uh, and I say a version of because there is no one standard recipe. Uh, last winter when Julie and I went to uh, Mexico a couple of times during the winter to learn about making El Pastor, when we were in those kitchens we asked everybody, how do you make your chorizo? And we got, uh, we got a lot of different answers. So I've sort of cobbled together a recipe that I think is um, going to be fairly close to what we tasted there, uh, as best I can do here in Toronto. And I'm going to start out with some peppers. So what I have here are some dried chilies. I have some guajillo and some ancho chilies. And I've got a pot of hot water here that has just come to a boil. I've turned the heat off so the water is hot. And I'm just going to put the chilies in and allow them to steep in the hot liquid for, I don't know, 25 or 30 minutes just so they soften up really nicely. While the chilies are still softening up, I'm going to grind together the rest of the spice mix. And that's all spice berries, coriander, thyme, bay leaves, cloves, cracked black pepper, cumin, and Mexican oregano. And so what I already have here is some ground paprika. I didn't need to regrind that. And our freshly ground spices, and we'll just give that a mix. And now we'll blend up the chilies. So I've got a blender jug here, and I'm going to take the chilies that have soaked, they're really soft now, and put them into the blender jug. And if they bring a little bit of water with them, that's fine. You don't really need the water, but don't go out of your way to drain them, you know, and be squeezing them tight to get rid of all the water. Okay, in they go. Next I've got some white vinegar, just regular distilled white vinegar. Some cloves of garlic, and a thumb size of achiote paste. And we'll blend this up. We'll set this aside while we deal with the pork. So what I have here is some roughly chopped pork shoulder and fat. And I've cut it up into pieces just big enough to fit through the chute. I've had it in the freezer for almost two hours now so that it's fairly firm. It's almost frozen all the way through. You want your meat to be super cold. I've got an eight millimeter die in here or eight millimeter cutter head. Uh, it's fairly coarse cut, but that's what we want for the first run through. So in here, I have the first coarse grind of the pork. To that, I'm going to add the dry spice mixture and the wet spice mixture. And then I'm just going to get in with my hands and mix it all together. Now, I'm going to spread it out. And I'm going to put this back in the freezer for about another 45 minutes before we grind it again. While that's chilling, I'm going to switch out the coarse disc for a much finer one. This one is four and a half millimeters. So, pretty easy job. Out comes one disc. And in goes the other. Now we're going to run the meat mixture through the finer disc. And running it through a coarse disc first and then the finer disc and adding the spices in the middle um, helps to promote mixing it really nicely. And also you get a better grind by not trying to grind it on the smallest disc first. So, the second time through is a little bit more difficult, but it's really not that hard. A 
Okay, I'm gonna put a lid on this, I'm gonna stick it in the fridge, and I'm gonna let it sit overnight just to let all of the flavors come together, and tomorrow we'll portion it out and do some stuffing. Now one of the great things about fresh Mexican style chorizo is that you don't have to make it into sausages. Most recipes that you see call for it to be released from the casing before you fry it. So just put it into containers. If you don't want to make sausages, just put the meat into a container and you can stick these in the freezer and then you pull them out whenever you need them. I am going to turn a little bit of this meat into actual sausages because I want to smoke them outside for supper tonight. So we'll fill up the sausage stuffer or fill it up as much as I need. Now, if you're looking for a full sausage tutorial, I have one coming up in the pipeline. So we make sausage quite a bit, and this is the one part of the process um, that I have never quite got the hang of. I do my best, I see how it goes. I am not someone who makes a lot of links. I will usually make a much longer piece and uh, turn it into a coil, and then vacuum seal those coils, sort of uh, enough for dinner for Julie and I. So like I said, I'm not someone who makes a lot of links, but I'll give it a try and then I'll finish up the rest of these and take them out to the Yoder smoker and we will cook them off for supper. Now, if you're not going to cook these today, I would actually leave them out on a tray in your fridge for 24 hours before you vacuum seal them and put them away. That gives time for the skin to dry out and you'll get a much better sausage when you go to cook it down the line. So there you go. The grill is set up at 225 degrees Fahrenheit and I like to cook my sausage or start my sausage at a much lower temperature. It just means that the sausage aren't gonna burst through their casings as easily. So I'm gonna put these on, and you wanna cook them to an internal temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Not that many people probably come out here with a thermometer and test them. Hey, Jules. Hey, Glenn. How's the sausage making? Uh, you know, I think we did okay. If I yeah. made 100 pounds of sausage every day, day in, day out, at a restaurant or a, or a butcher shop, it might you be, be better at it. It might be better yeah, at it. I think we say that every year when we make sausage. It's, it's, it's. You do it every once in a while and you sort of make it work. Tastes good, but it's a little awkward. Yeah. All right. Um, in this case, I used the wrong horn to film the. Oh. I used the wrong sized horn to fill the sausage. But yeah. whatever. So that's, that's pretty accurate in texture for a chorizo. Like it's a dried, um, flavorful kind of thing going on there. Full flavor, great texture. That is really good. But it really is the kind of sausage that you that you take out of the casing and you cook in other things. So I'm still gonna have a second one though. Um, I think that's great. I've got a pile of it now, so we'll be making a whole bunch of other recipes that use it. Um, and don't be afraid of making fresh sausage. It's not that hard to get something that's really good. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.